Good afternoon, I'm Nicole Austin, and today we have a member spotlight with Hands-On Discovery Center. And I'm pleased to be joined with by Andy, who's the president and CEO of Hands-On. Welcome, Andy, thank you for being here. Hey, Nicole, thanks for having us today. Wonderful, well, we wanna talk a little bit about Hands-On Discovery Center. I know you and I chatted a little bit before. My kids absolutely love this facility. It's amazing, it's focused on science, STEM, fossils, hands-on activities. Um, and it's really a gem in our region. And so you guys are doing a great job and you are open. So we want to talk a little bit about that, the hours that you're open. Tell us a little bit about what's going on at Hands On. Well, yeah, so we uh, we obviously closed in March for a little bit and, um, you know, waited for the Tennessee Pledge and the governor's guidelines for reopening. And um, we opened in the middle of June, reopened to the public. Um, with some pretty strict protocols and safety guidelines, not only for our staff, but for our visitors as well. So um, I'm happy to say that things have gone really quite well since June as far as, um, you know, keeping people safe, keeping our staff healthy, uh, keeping visitors healthy and comfortable while they're here. Um, you know, we require masks um, for each visitor that comes in, we give them to you. We have two sizes, one for kids, one for adults. Um, we have markers on the floor for each exhibit so people can stay in an exhibit and then it provides a little barrier for social distancing. Um, you know, we do uh, spot cleaning after every single touch of an exhibit. So we refocused a lot of our staff energy to ensure that each time somebody plays with an exhibit, or interacts with something and has been cleaned and disinfected. Um, and uh, we also require pre-purchasing tickets. So, um, you know, we follow the capacity guidelines pretty strictly. So, um, and you know, all of those things combined have worked out really well for us. We're a large facility. There's a lot of space uh, for people to spread out and, and, um, and so far so good with, with, with getting through the pandemic in an operation uh, situation. And you guys have said you really haven't had any incidents of anyone, you know, getting ill from coming to your facility and you're using it as an educational tool um, with exhibits on virus to help educate the public on on how viruses work. I think that's wonderful. Yeah, I mean, part of our, uh, I mean, a big part of our mission is just being a, a, a repository for information when it comes to science for, for individuals who come to visit the museum or or want to experience what we do as far as like some of our online content with our YouTube channel and Facebook videos. Um, but yeah, you'll find signage in the museum about the virus and uh, how COVID infects people. And, and we, we feel like it's our job to educate people while they're here. Um, and, you know, all of us have been engaged with this pandemic from, from the beginning, from just the science perspective of learning about it. Um, and trying to stay on top of it so that we know what's going on. We're comfortable from an operational standpoint. But I also think that's led to the success of our operations so far, which is to say that, you know, we haven't been contact traced, it, traced here. There's been no incidences with that. There's been no incidences with our staff or any visitors. So it's been, it's been really, really good so far. And knock on wood, it continues that way. That's great. And we want people to come out and view your beautiful facility because there is so much stuff to do. I think I told you earlier, we once spent over three hours there um, just enjoying some of those really neat exhibits. So, but for teachers and others, you're doing some neat things um, in Washington County that you're going to put out science kits in the spring. Tell us a little bit about those. Yeah, so we've received some funding to, to produce and develop some science kits. And obviously, you know, we think about our local and, you know, all educators, you know, throughout the region, but also nationwide and how stretched and stressed and everything that they are with, with going back and forth between remote and uh, in person and then hybrid learning. And, um, you know, we, we're, so we're trying to, to help and do some supplemental activities for, for students in the classroom. And so we've developed some science kits that will go directly to these classrooms. Um, it'll sort of take the place of a field trip this year since there are no field trips, but really it's kind of like a museum in, the, in a box. You know, you get, you get a package, you come a companion video with it, um, and it's just like an outreach. So um, there's activities that will last six to eight weeks for, for for students and teachers just to kind of help supplement some of that STEM learning in the classroom. 
and all of the materials and activities are actually tied back to the Tennessee Learning Standards for Science. So uh, it's a win for everybody, and we'd really love to expand that program beyond Johnson City and Washington County as well. That was going to be my next question, is I know you and I talked beforehand about um, wanting to extend that out into Sullivan County. If there's, there are donors out there or someone that's watching this that would love to help you guys make that possible, to get in touch with you and find out how we can also bring that to other kids in our region in Sullivan County and beyond. So we want to do that as well. So they would just reach out to you if they're interested. Absolutely. Just have them contact me. And um, it's not a, a it, you know, a little bit goes a long way with these science kits. We're very um, efficient in the way we develop them and put them out. We do them all in-house. So, um, you know, it's a, it's, it's a, like I said, it's a win for everybody, but we'd really love to expand the reach with these things. And, you know, this is something that we've had as a philosophy here is any kind of new program that we develop here at the museum, we want it to kind of continue after the pandemic. We don't want it just to be a band-aid. So um, this is something that could continue on um, once things are even back to normal. Absolutely. I love that idea. And not only are you guys doing a great job educating our kids in the region about science and STEM and all these other things, but you're also trying to help out the less fortunate children. You guys have two upcoming toy drives for the holiday season. Tell us a little bit about those. Yeah, so we have partnered with uh, two <coughs> uh, local organizations. Uh, Haven of Mercy uh, will be the first toy drive and that kicks off uh, this week. Um, and that'll go until the uh, 16th of December. Um, and basically, if you have a toy that you would like to give to the families that participate with the services of Haven of Mercy, you can come to the museum um, and donate it. And we'll even do 10% off of our gift shop. Yeah. So uh, regardless, so you can you even purchase a toy in our gift shop and donate it. And we'll do 10% off, you know, just to kind of help the cause. Yeah. And then we're doing Toys for Tots. We're doing a drive with that um, starting on the 17th. So, uh, so two back-to-back -back toy drives, if you're interested in helping out local children, um, this, you know, this year is, is an exceptional year for, for, for that kind of need. And um, we want as many kids to enjoy the holidays as possible. So we found two great partners and, um, and, and we'd, we'd love to, to, to make some holidays a little bit more bright for kids in our area. So, so if there's a toy that you want to donate or multiple toys that you want to donate, come by the museum, drop it off, and we'll make sure that uh, a kid's Christmas is a little bit brighter. Absolutely. Thank you guys for doing that and for working with kids in our region. We appreciate all that you're doing. So you guys are open. You're open Tuesday through Saturday from 10 to 5. You can get more information about Hands On on their Facebook page and also on their website. Um, they're doing a lot of great things in our community. and We want um, to support you in all of those endeavors. Thank you for joining us today, Andy. And we appreciate all you're doing for our region and the kids in our region. Thanks, Nicole. It's a pleasure. Glad to be here. All right. Have a great day. All right. You too. That's it for this week's King Sport Chamber Member Spotlight with Hands-On Discovery Center. For more information, go to the Hands-On website or their Facebook page.